started was housing, the residential housing market. And just almost unbelievably, you can hear, you may have heard recently different Congress people talking about trying to make banks extend credit to people. Well, that's part of what got us in this mess, was Congress mandating that if they wanted access to FHA funds and if they wanted threatening them with being shut down, they would have to lend to poorer people and poverty areas. And well, they're poor and poverty, maybe don't, they don't, they're not able to pay for a mortgage. But we're starting to see that cycle come around again. It's like we didn't learn from our mistakes in the first place. So what's going on in the housing market right now? Well, we're seeing some stabilization here. These are existing home sales, and you can see that the median price has dropped quite a bit, but it's starting to stabilize flat now. And we've seen, really, inventories fall off quite a bit, which is good. It started to spike back up a little bit, and that's what we're gonna see. As numbers get better, people get more confident. There's this shadow inventory out there, is what we'll call it. The people that would like to sell their house, would like to move for whatever reason, a job or family or just want a bigger place or smaller place, but they were and continue to be reluctant to put their house on the market in this environment. But as things stabilize, more and more people are gonna say, well, I've been waiting a long time. I really wanna get this house on the market that's going to cause inventories to go back up. Not concerning, but means that once we see a stabilization, we may see another little leg down in housing. And we've seen, thankfully, housing starts is a good leading indicator of what's going on, and we've seen that builders have not started nearly as many houses. And we've started to see that rebound a little bit, which indicates to us that the people that really know the housing market the best are starting to see some glimmers, glimmers of hope out there. And there's certainly signs of light because the inventory of new homes for sale has fallen off quite a bit. Again, we have to get this inventory level down so that more people can put their house on the market and the prices stop falling and people see it starts to be a feedback cycle that, okay, my, my house isn't dropping in value anymore, I'm willing to go out and look at another house because I don't think that that house is gonna be 10% cheaper if I wait six months anymore. It might even be a little bit higher. And there's not 20 houses available to purchase, maybe there's five in the neighborhood that they want. That starts to feed back on itself and improve. And part of what's helped that is housing affordability. Between prices, unfortunately, dropping quite a bit in a lot of areas, and really low mortgage rates, housing affordability was an all-time high. Now that we've seen prices stable, stabilize a little bit, improve in some areas a little bit, and rates tick up a little bit, housing affordability has come down a little bit, but it's still, as you can see, really pretty high, which is encouraging to get rid of that inventory. The housing market flowed through to the consumer. The consumer makes up 70% of the U.S. economy. So as people lost, even people that still had jobs and still had the same amount of income, they felt poor and were less confident in their economic situation. So they started saving more, reducing debt, and spending less. What was Spending being 70% of the U.S. economy, we need, that's one reason we need housing stabilized to encourage confidence in the consumer so they can go out and spend again, which helps fuel GDP growth in the United States, which will give confidence to businesses who will start to hire. Again, this feedback loop that with a little uptick in consumer demand and consumer spending, it can really start to kind of be a snowball rolling down a hill in a positive way. So we've seen that their deleveraging continues, um, again concerning. Still a little bit.
bit closer look that we've come down a little bit on the percentage of disposable income that is being allocated to debt payment and debt service, but there's still quite a ways to go. Are we, and the question I think people are asking is, are we going to get there quickly in the next two, three, four years, which would indicate a savings rate of 10 to 15 percent, massive deleveraging, and it would be tough to imagine the U.S. growing at any substantial rate in that environment, or are we going to do it gradually, kind of balance out the 3, 4, 5 percent savings rate, and just takes a little longer for that curve to come down. We are seeing part of the problem was that people couldn't get money to spend money. What had been so freely flowing through the early 2000s, well, through the whole decade, really, people could use their houses as ATM machines for vacations, TVs, almost anything. Well, then we saw credit standards just tighten ridiculously in a case of really shutting the barn door after the horses are long since gone. They go, oh, we're going to be responsible now. Well, it's a little late for that. And we're seeing that now they're starting to loosen up a little bit as things improve. As they're getting pressure from Congress, they're starting to, again, lend money a little bit. And the job picture, obviously people out of work aren't going to spend money, at least as rapidly as they were. And we can see, though, that the unemployment rate is the last thing to come around. The recessions are over by the time the unemployment rate starts to come down. And in fact, we think the recession probably ended in the second quarter of this year. When we look back, we'll see that the second quarter was probably actually the quarter, the quarter that the recession ended, and we think third quarter we'll see, end up seeing growth. So we could be near a peak in the unemployment rate if things continue to improve the way that they have been. And certainly energy prices, if we could get cheaper gas, cheaper heating bills, cheaper electricity bills, that, again, puts more money back in the consumer's pocket, which enables them to spend more. And oil has gone up, but compared to last year, when we were at $140 a barrel and close to $4 a gallon in gasoline, we're looking quite a bit better than that. And natural gas has come off a lot. So that does help the consumer situation a little bit. 